Hello, everybody. How are you doing tonight? Hi. No, let's just catch up and shit. Let's talk some more. You're... Come on. Really, you? Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Cafe DM Comedy Night. Uh, I appreciate you all for coming out. Even if it was a surprise, I still appreciate the hell out of you being here. Um, we have a uh, comedy show going on. Stand-up comedy. You're going to see... Thank you. Yes, it's fun. You're going to see a lot of people. Uh, there's a few people I know who's are first-timers tonight. There are a few people who are very funny and do it all the time. Richmond's Funniest Comic is here. Give it up for that guy, whoever the fuck he is. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just, yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, Tony is your bartender. He is working by himself tonight, so be patient, please, when he's like bringing you stuff. <laughs> also, uh, tip him a lot, because he is running the whole place by himself. Um, and uh, other than that, we're just going to start the show because we've got a long one for you tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Please welcome to the stage your host, a very funny guy who comes here often, Mr. Kwame Hayford. Cafe Dim, how you doing? Yep. Hold on, hold on. You're not loud enough. If, if you're ready for the laugh, just say three fifths compromise. Okay, that wasn't good. But anyways, hey, uh, welcome. We're going to have a good night tonight. Uh, we have a lot of comics, so I'm going to keep it real short. Uh, I'll tell a couple jokes, and then you guys don't want to hear the rest of me talk, so I'm just going to go in and go into it. So, this Friday, a uh, certain movie's coming out. I don't know if you guys know, The Dark Knight Rises. Can we get excited for The Dark Knight Rises? Now... The way I'm gonna work this into this joke is very uh, pretty simple, but uh, you know when you meet like a certain type of girl and she's like a tease, and you just she, she does us she sees per like she's perfect like the Dark Knight teasers trailer it's it's a great trailer it's like boom pow action Bruce Wayne oh shit that's the Bane oh man and then all of a sudden coming soon and it's stop he's like shit I can't even watch it right now. And she's basically cock-blocking me. I can't do anything with her because she's not out yet. So now, you know that movie that you can't get rid of that keeps coming back and back and back, but people keep watching it, like the Titanic? That's that girl that just lingers around and just hooks onto you. And you know, like, oh, I don't want to see her anymore. You need to get away from me because I might sink you. And that's physically, I might just drown you. And you don't want that. Now... Going off of movies, let me talk a little about myself because I'm an egotistical bastard. Um, as you can see, I'm a very dark male. And I have friends that like to make notice of this darkness on my face that I can't get rid of because my mom gave birth to this dark child. Now, my darkness, my friends, they just they point it out at least twice, ten times a day. And it's something that I've gotten used to, but then I've, no, I've gotten to notice that this, these jokes are becoming progressively worse. Like, I need to coach them to make better black jokes about me so then I can feel better about myself a little bit, but still feel pretty shitty because they're calling me dark. So, like, one of my friends, he would go like, wow, it's dark outside. Kwame's dark. If I put two and two together, holy shit, okay, this is gonna be awesome. Hey, hey, hey Kwame. <laughs> Yo, it's dark outside. Where are you? I can't see. Ew, you're so dark and then I'm like dude I'm like right here my teeth are still white so obviously you got eye color problems or something cause shit if I'm black and my teeth are white something must stand out on my body but you to proceed to use the joke so I'm gonna give you a zero unless you try again you come back in a couple weeks give me a better joke and I may or may not uh, go to your house and uh, possibly have sex with your sister that's just say now it's just hot um uh, another thing about being black i'm assumed to be african but my parents are african i was born in maryland in the suburbs white as shit um my parents from ghana they uh they raised me well i, I haven't had i haven't been arrested yet uh knock on wood um but my parents my mom she's a private nurse and she uh, takes care of the old ladies and goes to their place and gives them food and water and old people stuff. And 
one, I, I, she took me with her to go see how they were doing, and I go, I was like, okay, mom, this will be boring, but okay. So I go up there, go with my mom, and then the lady sees me, she's like, oh, well, aren't you the darkest crayon on the bowl of grits? And I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down, bitch. Um, darkest crayon on a bowl of grits? Like, I, I'm not even worthy enough to be in a box of crayons, but you put me in a bowl of grits, a breakfast cereal, like, at least put me with other colors, so I at least am the least used color, except when you have to draw on your black friend in the portion of, like, your, like, friends. Here's, here's my Asian friend, Cindy, or use yellow. Here's my white friend, we'll use white. <laughs> we'll use, here's my alien friend that I don't know, you'll use green, but here's my black friend, we'll just, <laughs> just draw black all over the front page. And that's, that's her portrait. Um, here, I'll do, do one more thing and get this thing started. Um, uh, we'll do the negative joke. Okay. How many of you have seen the movie Black Swan? Okay. Black Swan, starring Natalie Portman, sexy woman. She is a ballerina with mental problems, and she's, like, dancing, and she wants to get on the big stage. Now, appealing to black people, that's not really, like, a movie you want to see. So I was thinking, you know, we mix it up a little bit, make a little hood, like little boys in the hood hood. We put some like, you know, Mel, not Mel Gibson, wow, that's, he's white. Um, Mackay Pfeiffer, maybe um, uh, Oprah Winfrey. And we uh, mix it up, we get like a really good black swan. We'll get, instead of Natalie Portman, we'll get like maybe Bill Cosby, because everyone loves Bill Cosby. And we'll call it uh, Nigga Duck. And the, the plot of Nigga Duck is the, the, the Nigga Duck has to battle his way through the streets with just hip hop dancing and just straight up, just like, just just terrible, terrible shootings and things happen to them. And they'll love it, no, they'll, they'll buy it. And that is where I'm gonna stop my joke so you guys can have a good night. Cafe Diem, are you ready to have a good time? Up next, coming to the stage, is a guy that I do not know, but you guys will meet him. His name is Michael Kettner. Michael Kettner. Michael, oh, you're not Michael. Next, coming to the stage, is a man, yes, a man, Dave Dahl. Thank you, man. Hey, everybody, I'm Dave Dahl. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, right off the bat, I think boxing would be more fun to watch. We just electrified the ropes. <laughs> Instead of a TKO, I'd have an EKG. <laughs> Sad. Anyone here going to college? Anyone been to college? Anyone here looking for a job? Yeah. It's tough finding a job. You know, I went to college. I got a degree in philosophy. <laughs> yeah, joke's on me. After $30,000 in four years, I'm still a dumbass who can't get a job at Walmart. Although I'm still brighter than your average politician. Right? So what college taught me is I'm too smart to be the president, too dumb to ring up his groceries. That's a new one. So I, so I, I like you. You should drink some more. I, um, I, um, yeah, actually, instead of um, philosophy, I should have uh, gotten my degree in creative writing because that way I'd be able to fake a better resume. See, resumes help people get jobs. My resume shows people I should be euthanized. You know, put me out of my misery, so to speak. But, um, but in the end, I found a good job. I made a career, wrote a book about it. I called it Waiting Tables to Welfare. You know, my life is worse than yours. You know, uh, didn't sell a lot of copies, ironically. Most of my books were donated to inmates living on death row. Right? Which is kind of an oxymoron. Uh, I guess it helps them feel better about themselves. You know, the warden would just point at my picture and say, hey, your life could be worse. Look at this guy. I'm told death row is a much happier place once my book arrives. So uh, anyone here like alcohol? Anyone here? Yeah? Woo, liquor. I, um, I'm not a big drinker. I, I want to drink a little more. Uh, the worst part about drinking in my mind is the hangover. You know? Um, I think the world would be a better place if drinking holy water could get rid of a hangover. Right, because then Sunday morning, you know who the drunks are, because they're the guys at church with the Dixie Cups. Right, every bar would want to sell it. They'd call it absolute absolution. Right, the Grey Goose Gospel or Communion Cabernet. Better yet, let's just make the um, make the bartender a priest. He could just bless the tap water. Oh yeah, it's all right. It's open mic. You don't have to laugh. You can make me feel bad. <laughs> like my wife. 
What are we talking about? Uh, alcohol, um, open mind, blah, 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 blah. Well, I've lost my train of thought. Anyone here think that, I think kids learn about the world from the games they play, which means the rich kids played Monopoly and the fat kids played Candyland. <laughs> One game, they don't play any more shoots and ladders. I mean, they're out of shape. Should be shoots and escalators. Shoot, I can't climb that ladder. Shoot, where's Candyland? I'm still trying to think of that liquor stuff. Oh, you know what? Instead of blessing the tap water, let's just put the bar and the church in the same building. That way you could go out Saturday night, have a few drinks, pass out, wake up Sunday, get a glass of water, and order a Bloody Mary. Right? I think that'd be a great job, the bartender at the Church of the Holy Water. Because not only do you meet a lot of drunk women, but you get a pass around your tip jar during the offering. Mm -hmm. yeah. So any of you ladies out here uh, lesbian? Yeah? Really? Good for you. You're the envy of every man in this building. You know? Um, lesbians are like, you know, normal people, but with better sex lives. Um, I have a power. I can turn normal heterosexual women gay. No fewer than, no, this is, I swear to God, this is true. No fewer than three of my past girlfriends have switched sides. Right? So, um, I don't really know what to say. That's not really a joke. It's just kind of my life. I'm like an open book. Right? I'm like King Midas, but instead of gold, I make lesbians. Right? <laughs> I mean, it got so bad, my sister wanted to date some girls, and so she set them up with me. <laughs> All right, one more here, and then I'm out of here. I think, um, I was at the candy store, and uh, they got regular size candy bars, then they got the smaller size, you know, the fun size. I never really understood why that smaller package is called the fun size. Let's face it, ladies, if your man had a smaller package, would you be calling him Mr. Fun Size? Thank you very much. I'm Dave Dahl. Give it up again for Dave Dahl. All right, um, up next, coming to the stage, is another male, Bounce Adams. Here you go, Bounce. My doctor hasn't figured out what the hell is wrong with me. I told my doctor for someone who graduated from medical school, you ask a lot of stupid ass questions. Like, what can I do to make you feel good about yourself? Well, Doc, you're the only person who encourages me to get naked. <laughs> and they're playing with my balls. <laughs> but that's cool, because it's not gay if there's a copay. <laughs> then my doctor asked me, when was the last time you engaged in sexual activity? If the short bus is rocking, I'm having a fucking seizure. <laughs> on that note, I'm back on the dating scene. <laughs> like, I was watching the news recently, and they're saying that the most recent trend in dating are pheromone parties. And it's where a group of singles get together and sniff each other's clothing, hoping to find that special someone. Yeah, creepy. So I went to one. You know, and uh, I gave, and I started telling this girl, yeah, I can't cook, I make less than $20,000 a year, and my dick is in your mouth, but my shirt smells fantastic. <laughs> and then I told her, your thong smells like deception, manipulation, and divorce. <laughs> Would you like to grab a coffee? Started, started thinking about my ex-girlfriend and she told me her body was a temple. Yeah, because every time I go inside, 
there's fire, brimstone, and guilt. Okay. <laughs> I am the Christopher Columbus of love making. I did not discover the G spot. I just landed on that shit by accident. <laughs> On that note, I used to work with kids. <laughs> like a lot of my co-workers would tell me that some parents use television as a babysitter. That's not always a bad thing. The television never ate all my fucking Twinkies. <laughs> the television never bought marijuana into the house and refused to share. And the television never told me, no, I'm not going to play with you in the bathtub. <laughs> Just trying out some new stuff tonight. Oh, man. Yeah, like working with kids, man, like whenever the kids would ask me questions, I had to play it safe and lie my ass off. Like, where do babies come from, Target? What are you going to be for Halloween, normal? What's masturbation? It's when you're late for work. <laughs> and I'm late for work at least twice a day. <laughs> at Target. That's why the iTunes gift cards get sticky. <laughs> I cannot do that joke at the goddamn funny bone. <laughs> Because they think I'm playing when I say it. Okay. <laughs> that is my time, y'all. I'm bounce out and have a good night. Give it up again for Bounce Adams.